Here I hold four quarters and they make a dollar. U.S. currency, you're asking yourself, if you read the title, what does a dollar have to do with the Titanic and the sinking of the Titanic? Let's get into that. A lot of people are familiar with the movie. We're not going to talk too much about the movie. I'm going to deal straight with the facts, right? The Titanic had some of the world's most wealthiest people on board its cargo unbeknownst to many. One of the more notable was John Jacob Astor. He would have been worth around 87 million. Today that would equate to like maybe 2.2 billion dollars back then. He died on that boat. You had Isidore Strauss was a man who started Mises. He also was worth millions. In today's terms would have been billions. As a matter of fact, uh, he's more notable because him and his wife both died on a boat. She didn't want to leave without him, so she decided to stay with him. That part in the movie was true, but that's who they're talking about. So he died as well as so another millionaire that's dead. You had a man named Benjamin Guggenheim, okay? Uh, this guy was a Jewish tycoon. He's a mining tycoon, rather. A Jewish mining tycoon. Uh, really, really big, huge back then. One of the more notable figures he um, also died on the ship and he's famous because he decided to help all the women and children as much as he can off and then smoke a cigar after he put on his best suit and he went down with the ship. I um, mean, the list doesn't stop there. You got a man named Thomas Andrews who was a naval architect. Go out. You know, you had uh, William Thomas Steed. This man was a uh, journalist and a uh, newspaper editor. Uh, he was one of the most famous of his time, actually. He wasn't just any editor. Like, if you wanted the most sensational story to be captured, you would go through him. All of these people, Henry B. Harris, a big, big-time Broadway producer. Uh, interestingly enough, you had a, a man named Andrew Sachs. He was the man who came up with um, the clothing store, uh, Sachs Fifth. He wasn't on the ship, no, but his daughter happened to be on the ship. See, I think she was coming to uh, tend to him. He had just passed away a few days ago. And um, thankfully, she survived. But she's an heiress, another millionaire who's on the ship. She's got to ask herself, okay, you have all these millionaires who by today's standards would be considered billionaires. On this one boat, what are the odds? And you may be thinking, well, you know, it was a, it was a uh, big time ship and it was luxury and yada, yada, yada. But I ask you. When's the last time you've seen openly all the world's billionaires, or uh, at least a good deal of them, taking the same trip on the same vehicle at the same time for the same destination? I can't really recall. So what exactly was going on? That boat sank in 1912. One of the things that all these people on board that boat had in common was not just their money. It was the prohibition and there are uh, reluctancy for what we know as the centralized banks. Here in America, it's called the Federal Reserve. In the UK or, or London, rather, it's called the Bank of London. Anytime you see the Bank of, that's a slang for a universal bank or a centralized bank, um, which is never really owned by the country. It's owned by privateers, if you will. You know, but all of these people happen to be against this movement. And see, the problem back then, unbeknownst to a lot of you today, is that we, our wealth meant something back then. You know, if I was wealthy, it's because I either had land, gold, you know, other precious metal, gems, natural resources, or maybe even all of the above. So, your wealth was backed by something back then. Today is not that. You know, when you have money, say like the coins I showed you earlier, it isn't backed by anything. Not that we know of, right? But these men and women had actual wealth and they were opposed to a centralized bank. Normally what you would do is you would try to buy them out, but how do you buy out someone who has them to everything and how do you influence or coerce someone with money when they don't need it you don't you get them out the way you have to get them out the way you had collectively a lot of the world's wealth 
on one friggin boat on one boat that was not done by mistake there was another millionaire who was supposed to be on that boat that night too his name is john pierce morgan jp morgan you know who later on merged with uh you know chase and they made the uh, morgan chase banks and whatever the case however he got <clears throat> sick the night before and decided to forfeit his ticket or maybe he you know a little something the other uh, passengers didn't. The boat sank in 1912. 1913 is when a group of people got together off the coast of Georgia, uh, Jekyll Island, and came up with the Federal Reserve and they put it into act. 1914, World War One breaks out. One thing that you would know about war is that whenever there's war, someone's going to profit because someone's going to have their funds depleted. Countries go in debt when there's war. They need armaments, munitions, uniforms, oil, all types of shit. Oil is very expensive. And who do you think these nations went to? Normally, you would go to your chief, then your local baron, your duchy, whomever who had that wealth. But mind you, a lot of these people now had kind of been systematically taken out. So the only one you would go to was that centralized bank. Going on further, in the 1930s, we were in what you would call the Great Depression, or so they told us. And what they told uh, the people back then, both black and white, rich and poor, free and unenslaved, they told them that the country needed them to bail them out. So they said, hey, come to these buildings, which we now know as banks, and give us your all your gold. See, back then, every family had some type of gold or some type of jewelry that was a family heirloom. It was just customary. And you'd keep it through, you know, generations. It was your daddy's, it was his daddy's, and so forth. But the citizens went, listening to the president at the time, they went and they deposited the gold and precious metals to the banks. And the banks, in return, gave them a promissory note. That promissory note is what we know as the dollar bill, five dollar bill, the fiat currency. And all it's saying is, hey, you gave me X amount of gold. Here's a note telling you that this is what it's good for and we're going to pay you back one of these days. Until then, use this as legal tender. Accept it everywhere. No. And that's what happened. Only problem was that those people never got paid back. They died spending fake money, essentially, you know. And then they told us that all this gold was in Fort Knox, but rumor has it that there's no more gold in Fort Knox. Then I believe either in the 60s or the 70s, America was taken off of the gold standard and they were put on the oil reserve. So now your money is not backed by, the gold is backed by barrels of oil. Well, what happened to the gold? Back to the Titanic. So you're probably wondering, okay, you're saying or alluding to the fact that that ship may have been sunken on purpose. Yeah. And you're probably thinking, okay, how do you get someone like White Star Line, which was a booming business, to, to openly sink one of their vessels? Easier than you may think. The owner of the White Star Line, I believe his name was Ismay, don't quote me on that. They had a ship. This ship was known as the Botanic. And this ship looked exactly identical to what we know as the Titanic. Only difference was when you got inside the boat, the appliances and things were not as updated as the newer Titanic. On top of that, the maintenance it cost them, it was always leaks, always repairs. It was really costing them more money to keep it afloat than if it were at the bottom of the ocean where they can get maybe some type of insurance claim, you know? Almost like how a label would say a rapper is worth more to them dead than alive. Okay, the Botanic and the Titanic were twin ships. Only the Titanic was newer. What they did was they took the Botanic, painted it, Titanic, sent it out. It sinks. They get cashed out. See, the history books told you that when the Titanic sank, White Star Line kind of, you know, declined, went bankrupt, yada, yada, yada. All that's true. But they didn't tell you it was about the big ass cash out insurance wise that was made out to that company. Anytime a spouse takes out an insurance policy on his or her spouse and then his or her spouse ends up dead, they're always the first suspects to be looked at. 
Why was this any different with the White Star Line in the, in the, in the uh, course of the Titanic and all those people who died at sea? Well, what I'm telling you is that what you think was going on was a lot bigger than some romantic love story. Not only that, but when I read the memoirs of a lot of the survivors, they see that there was a ship a few miles ahead of them that just looked on. When those people sent out flares and distress signals, they were radioing to that ship, which a lot of people would say was the USS California, but you know, again, don't quote me on that. And this is hours before the Carpathia came to rescue them. Those people died in that water in about 30 minutes once they hit it. 30 minutes or less, they were dead. And there was a ship right there looking, almost as if to make sure the job was done effectively. So now you got two birds killed with one rocket, I mean iceberg. You have a lot of the world's wealth on one ship who oppose this agenda. You take them out, bah! You have a cruise line company who then gets a big payout. Problem solved, and then the rest shall we see with history. From the sinking of the Titanic, immediately you see promissory notes, fiat currency, coins, minted, printed out of thin air almost, meaning nothing back by nothing. That's the connection between the Titanic and our currency. So anytime you see a dollar or coin, whatever, Think about them people on that boat. It was really our only defense between true wealth and so-called wealth. And they were all taken off in one night. And they all, uh, I hope this video has been enlightening for some of you all. And just keep in mind again that the world that you think that you live in is not the world that you live in. Y'all bless.